Aiden's first year. So now he's in his second year with us. And obviously Kihei and I have been together forever, right? right. <laughs> so, which is a good thing, it's a great thing. But I think uh, no question with the additions of the, the recruits, the young guys coming in the first years with uh, a really high quality transfer, that makes us have quality depth. Last year our depth wasn't great and we probably didn't shoot the ball uh, at the level we needed to, so we tried to improve in those areas. But experience is golden, I think, in, in college basketball. And we, ha we have that actually walking around there's a lot of teams with a lot of experience in the ACC, which will make, I think, for a, a tremendous ACC league. It feels like that. Next question, we will bring it to the right side. We'll catch our next two questions on this right side. First from row three, then right behind him in row four. Um, Frank Maloney, uh, who's talking on 910, the fan? Um, I'm going to direct this to Jaden. Um, Jaden, uh, now that you've been in the system a while and you're beginning to really understand the defense, what is your outlook for your role uh, in this year's team? Um, I think this year, just the defense just slowing down for me and just getting accustomed to it and knowing where to be and also encouraging the young guys as they go through their first year because I just went through it. I think that's been a big step for my development on the defensive end, being ahead of the game, ahead of the curve. So I'm just excited for this, for this team. I'm excited for my growth on the other end of the court. Again, right behind him, fourth row. Doug Dowdy, Roanoke Radio. <laughs> if I'm looking at these numbers correctly, two fifth-year players, two grad students, two juniors, two seniors. Is that, have you had a team like that before with all that older players? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the landscape of college basketball. You know, I was looking in last year, even in the NCAA tournament, a lot of the teams, um, I remember Miami and our league had a lot of experienced players. So I think you're seeing that. Me personally, this probably is the, the oldest team um, maybe that I've had. I, this is my 14th year here. Um, and, you know, we've always, I think why Virginia was good and even where I was before, either as an assistant or a head coach, Washington State and the other stops, We've had mature teams, teams that have had guys in their upperclassmen years that have grown through the experiences of playing. And again, that's always been the formula. So I think um, that's, we're fortunate this year that these guys decided to come back and then we've got you know, some valuable experienced, experienced players from last year as well. Kihei, from the podium here, coach joked that you've been around him forever at this point. <laughs> what is it about coach that you know now that you didn't know when you first came into the system? Um, that, sorry, what was the last part of the question that I didn't? Yeah, what do you know now about him that you didn't know when you first got there five, 10, 100 years ago, whatever it was? <laughs> you uh, can't remember, he's forgot. <laughs> so. um, no, I think uh, I always knew um, like how uh, great of a, a person and a, and a coach coach was. Um, but I don't think coming in I knew how much of a um, how funny he was. He, 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 makes, he makes little jokes in practice off the court that uh, um, have helped uh, our relationship grow, and um, it's always been a pleasure to, to just be around him. Questions for UVA. We're going to go to the very back, to the left, one of the last tables. Kevin Young from the three-point conversion. My question is for both Jaden and uh, Kihei. Can you uh, guys both tell us about your experience playing in Italy this past summer? Uh, I think the experience was, was good and, uh, you know, we're walking around a lot of places seeing the, the vast history of, of their land and then in the afternoon we're playing basketball. So it was just quite the experience. I remember one day we climbed, what, like a thousand flights of stairs <laughs> and then we, then we had a basketball game. I mean, it's just great. You know, we're eating gelato every night, you know. It was just a kid's fantasy, man. I just, I'm very thankful for that trip. Gelato is good <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> Key, hey. uh, no, it was a great experience. Um, I think as a team, just to be able to have those 10 days before um, the trip um, of official practice, uh, get to go two hours full board um, is really important just uh, to be ahead of a lot of teams who don't get to practice like that ahead. And then um, while we were there, it was a, a great bonding experience for um, me and my teammates. I think we grew closer for sure. Um, I think it was a time for like Ben and the new guys to just um, gel with the team who, who the guys who are returning 
um, but I had an awesome time. It was a great trip. We're going to go back to the right with Frank and then again with Doug right afterwards. Um, Coach, I'd like to get your thoughts on this and then also the players. Um, very interesting schedule this year. Um, we always look at the schedule in advance and you know, look to see you know, how are the, how's the season going to set up based upon the non-conference games. I see this year you've got Baylor, the defending national champions. You've got Michigan in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Uh, potential chance to play either UCLA or Illinois. And you've got Florida State on December the 3rd for your first ACC game. Talk to us a little bit about why the schedule was designed that way, and then also uh, how exciting it is for the players to face these teams. Yes, yeah, so yeah. coach first, then player reaction. Coach first, first. yep. And you, you didn't mention Houston and right. Northern Iowa, when you name it. I mean, the thing about college basketball now, last year we played a very good Navy team and got beat. We went to JMU in a real tough environment and played them, and they played great. Like, college basketball is like that. But as players, um, you know, this is an experienced team, and there's a chance to really uh, have a chance to go get some big wins, which is important. You know, the ACC was, we talk about it, it got better as the year went on. It was, I think, sneaky good, but it certainly evolved because it was a newer league with newer players, and then it showed its worth in the NCAA tournament, those teams that got in. And, um, you know, a lot of times the die is cast. How does a team do in the non-conference? And fair, or unfair, unfortunately, that's kind of how it is, and I don't think that's always right. But there are some opportunities for us. And look, even if those don't go the way you want, you really can grow and learn from those games and prepare yourself going forward. But some of those are return games. Obviously, the ACC Big Ten is a good one, but exciting for these guys, and it'll test us. And when we're doing rebounding drills in practice, I'll sometimes say, hey, remember Houston last year, or we're going against these teams. We have to be ready for that. But exciting, certainly. Great programs, great teams. These guys have established a heck of a program. So that's, that was the plan. And um, try not to take a back seat to any of those teams and, and go prepare well to play and enjoy the process. Kihei or Jaden, would you like to respond? Um, I think it's going to be very exciting just to go against that comp competition and talent, uh, playing at Vegas, playing at Michigan. You know, those are like once in a lifetime type opportunities for us. And it just helps us get, us, get, ahead, as a, get ahead of the curve before we get into ACC play because we're going to be battle tested very early. So I think it's going to be great for our development as we go throughout the season. You want it? Uh, yeah, I think just as a competitor, just to be able to play against those type of teams. Um, those are the games you look forward to when you're little and um, those matchups. So um, just preparing for those like any other game, but um, like Coach said, not taking a backseat to any of them and just going out and playing our game. So it should be fun. Let's go back to Doug. Yeah, Kihei, over the course of your career, did, would you have thought you'd still be playing at Virginia at this point? And is that something you and the older players on the team discussed that, to continue to play past what a lot of people play? Uh, I think, I mean, early on, like my first and second year, obviously a, fi a fifth year wasn't really um, in my mind just because, I mean, knock on wood, just thinking I'm staying healthy. But um, COVID happened and uh, I got blessed with to be able to come back. So, um, yeah, I mean, especially me and Jaden, you know, being our fifth years, we talked about uh, like what each other were doing and um, obviously it played, played a role in it. So, um, yeah. Coach, I want to get this story in, and for those that don't know, if you would walk us through it. Sometimes the stars align when you least expect it. Your family connection with the Vanderplas family yeah. and being able to have Ben as a transfer, can you take us through that? Yeah, I played with uh, Ben's father, Dean. He was my college teammate, played for my father at Wisconsin Green Bay, and obviously knew Dean and Mary, uh, Ben's mom in college. She went to Green Bay. so just that relationship and uh, they actually named Ben after my father Bennett so I've I figured I'd be the worst recruiter in the history of the game if I can't get a guy who's named after my dad and I'm a teammate of his his dad to come to come to Virginia but um, no these, these guys I think they've embraced Ben and he's got a great way about him as these two do there's a good um, just a they're the right kind of guys. We talk a lot about what our program, we try to be about the pillars of our program. And I always say these are pillar kind of guys. None of us have them perfect, but they're, they're humble guys, but they're competitors. And they, they're, to me, what's right about college basketball. I'll say that. And, but uh, that story about Ben, yeah, that was the question. That is a unique connection. And, and um, so I'm 
glad we got him, and, and he's been great to have around. Thank you. Other questions for UVA? We'll go back here to the right. Coach, this is a highly touted first-year class coming in. Could you give just a quick update of where they kind of are now and what you'd like to see them progress in? And I'm curious if Isaac McNeely's um, experience playing the pack line at POCA has impacted his ability to – yeah. I don't know that all pack lines are created the same, but what that's <laughs> been like for him being able to show yeah. up on grounds and, and step into that defense on day one. For sure. Uh, Isaac McNeely's from the POCA Dots. That's their nickname. Coach, coach O was his uh, coach, really well – well coached, yeah, they played that defensive system and did some things, so that certainly helps. I think with this first year class and these guys, I think would attest to it, you see flashes of like, wow, what they can become. And it's just about becoming consistent. And, um, but no, they all show great flashes and um, as they continue to learn and get consistent, they're gonna have really good careers. Some, it might happen sooner than others. And then, you know, the, the question will always be, will, will you be willing to, to work through it, be patient, and go. But I, I like them, all of them, different times. Wow. And then you see those first-year struggles. Like Jaden said, you know, he tries to encourage them, but he was in his third or fourth year of college basketball. They're in their first year. and they're, You know, you see the look. It's just it's real for, for all players at any college they go to. But, um, but a good, again, they represent the right stuff, different strengths. You know, again, um, some guys do different things. So they, they complement each other well. we got to keep adding the class. These guys are leading them in the right way, and you just keep building. So um, it's good. Team, your last question will come to our left right here on the second row. Gene Gowan with the Chatham Journal. Uh, for the players, you mentioned that a coach is good at telling jokes. Um, <laughs> are the coaches' jokes comparable to dad jokes? And can you <laughs> recite one of the coaches' <laughs> said, jokes? I say jokes, but... <laughs> Wow, what a question. Uh, <laughs> I got a joke in my mind right now. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say equivalent to dad jokes. Uh, <laughs> I think, I don't know. They're just, you know, I wouldn't say jokes, exactly jokes, but just little sayings here and there that I think are, are pretty funny. We make light of a lot of yeah, moments. a lot of moments. We don't take ourselves too serious. Yeah, that's in the moment kind of jokes. So I can't just like remember it on top of my head. That's right. right. Good answers. They kept our secrets safe. So. Virginia, What's a dad a joke? Lot. I want you to expand upon what's a dad joke? What is that, you know? Is corny? Is that what it is? Are you trying to say? My, my kids would probably accuse me of that if that's what that means. 